We are talking about evidence-based parenting today. And my guest is somebody I always look forward to listening to. She is loaded. And I'm also ready to learn again today. You can see me with my journal, my pen. I'll be showing our guests soon, but I just want to at least let people know we are here so that we can all get blessed together. So if you're there, just say hello. I can see people joining already, please. If you're there, say hello, I. Let's know you are there. Let's know you are there. Evidence-based parenting. So it's gonna be a lot of practical talk today. It's gonna to be a lot of practical talk. So I really want to learn. So if you had our last Zoom meeting, you're going to agree with me that today is gonna to be another wonderful time because immediately after the last meeting, a lot of people were already messaging me, when is Mommy Tolu coming back? When is Mommy Tolu coming back? And today we are, we are privileged to have her and it's gonna be awesome. So it's gonna be awesome. Hello, Mrs. Shumade, I see you there. It is going to be awesome today. I am very excited about this evening. All right, I am just going to bring uh, Mommy Tolu in. People can always play again and watch later because we really want to use the time very well and we don't want to use more than one hour to the maximum. So people can always uh, play back later when they are free. And I believe this is going also going to be available on YouTube. So we are not going to wait. So if you're just joining me, this is another Parenting Essential Time from the Vision Guide. And if you're seeing my face for the very first time today, my name is Oye for short. Oye Lyo, your parenting coach. And today I am not alone on this session. I have one of my mamas, my mentor that I look on to, I look up to in learning great things here with me this evening. I'm so privileged having her. And we are gonna be talking about evidence-based parenting evidence-based parenting. So I will advise you, if you are a parent, intentional parent, uh, intending parent, single, but you look, you look forward to becoming a parent one day, and you are on this session today, I will advise you to get a pen and a, a, your notebook, your jotter, your journal, whatever it is, because definitely there will be something you don't want to forget that you want to pen down to go back to later. I promise you that. You definitely want to write something down something that you don't want to forget. So, and that is exactly what I'm doing today. And I'm going to be uh, unveiling mommy in case you have not seen her before, if you're not in our last uh, Zoom session. Mommy Tolu. So she's right here with me. I am so, so, so blessed having you here, mommy, today. Thank uh, you so much. All right, that is Mommy Tolu Olaji Day. And I'm so privileged to have her with me. She's my mama, in case you don't know about it. I think a lot of people are aware now, it's not in news. But in case you are not aware, she is my mama. And um, it's, it's such a great privilege. So sometimes I just feel like I'm blessed. I'm the only blessed person on earth having these great mamas. And uh, you know, it's a great privilege for her to say, yes, oh yeah, I'll come to your platform. So I'm not counting it that for, I'm not just counting it just for fun or like it, it's my right. No, I count it as a great privilege. And I want to say thank you so much, mommy, for, for coming. And for those who are just joining, uh, Dicky Nomo, I cite you there. If you're there, just say hello. I can see quite a number of people there right now. Just say hello so that I can just say hello back to you. We are talking about evidence-based parenting today. So today we have mommy Tolu. Olajide with us. Mommy Tolo Olajide is one of my mentors. I met her about um, 
just a brief one in case you were not at the Zoom about, that should be around 12 years ago there about now when I came newly to Doha, she was the first manager I worked with in Doha and she has impacted my life positively and she is still imparting my life. You know, I, most especially in the aspect of parenting, you know, before I became a mother, there were things that I learned from her and I kept them safe. Just the, like the Yoruba we say, I did the same, I kept it safe. I kept those information safe. So the, by the time I needed them, I just went there to just speak them. Oh, mommy told me this, she said that. And those things worked for me. So today I don't want to be selfish, you know, like okay, these things that are working for me, somebody who has imparted my life, why not bring her on into the platform and let her bless everybody? I'll just allow mommy to say hello to everyone today. Go ahead, mommy, and say hello to everyone. Thank you so much, my darling. You know, I love you so much. And um, it's a privilege to be on your show. Um, you're doing an amazing thing. Thank and um, I'm just honored to be with you. And I greet everybody that is present here and that will be watching it later on replay. God bless us all. And I hope the Lord gain something from this session today in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, that's mommy. You just heard her. Hey, <laughs> get ready, get ready, get ready. You know, I'm just very excited. I just love to hear her speak. I said that before, if you're just joining me, make sure you have your pen. Make sure you have your daughter, your notebook, your journal, whatever you can save something that you don't want to lose, that you want to pen down. Go ahead and get a pen because definitely there'll be something that you will like to keep for later. And let me tell you today, it's not just theoretical aspect. Mm -hmm. We are going into practical. We don't just want to say what we don't do, but we really want people to know that we are not just saying these things. We are not just raising our voices. We are not just shouting, but it's, it's what we do and it's working for us. So mommy, I want you to start on the notes today by speaking to the singles. And uh, yes, yeah, singles or intending parents, maybe parents in waiting, they are married and they're waiting on God to have children. What do you think in this waiting period, maybe they're waiting for husband to be married and have children or they are already married. What are the important things they should be doing in this their waiting period? Go Thank ahead. you very much. Um, first for the singles, um, I want you to know that being single is not, um, it's not a disease, it's not something that is a lack on your part, you know, and um, it's, not, it's, not, um, it's not a state of incompleteness, let me put it that way. Your singleness is the time when you actually discover yourself and you become a whole person, you know, so that when you get into marriage, it is one whole person meeting another whole person so that you can become one. You know, a lot of times we have a broken person meeting a broken person or a broken person meeting a whole person, and then you keep on having issues throughout your life. Hmm. So this is the time to actually take care of yourself, you know, to, to look at your life. At, I mean, you're in the face of your life now when um, you are planting your decisions that you take now would impact you 20 years to, in future. Mm -hmm. So take care about what you think about, take care about your decisions. Don't get pressured by society or by people or by well-meaning or intentional people, family members into going into marriage to anybody just because they say you need to get married. Mm -hmm. You know, marriage is something that is it's supposed to be enjoyed. And a lot of times uh, we endure marriage and uh, we don't enjoy it. And enduring marriage is not a good thing, you know, because there's no way it will not impact your life in one way or the other. So take your time now, um, focus on yourself, build up a confident person, know God and know exactly what you want. You know, if you don't have a vision for your tomorrow. You will get into tomorrow and there'll be nothing there or you'll just fall for anything that you see. So picture in your mind the kind of man you want. Pray to God to give you a man like Jesus by your side. You know, a man after God's own heart, a man that'll be a representation of Jesus right by your side. You know, and begin to intentionally think about that kind of home that you want. You know, do you have the finances? What kind of man do you want? I once had Mama Dejumon say something that um, 
the, the eagle would always throw their, their, their young ones, you know, up so that they can learn to fly. And when they are falling, the eagle will go and catch them so they don't fall down. Your husband or the man you're going to marry is that eagle mother. Can that person carry you? You know, if someone is going to be your head, your head, is that a head indeed? Or you're just marrying, uh, you know? So be very careful about all those things. Look at the characteristics, especially look at a man that knows God, not a churchgoer, but a Bible-believing person that has the fruit of the spirit. And take your time before you go into marriage. And when you do get married, for those that are married or for those that are waiting to have children, it is also not a time for you to feel you are incomplete. Just trust that there's nothing that God cannot do. And in that time of waiting, begin to ask God, if you don't already know your purpose, what is my purpose, Lord? What am I learning in this waiting room? You know, somebody once says that when you're waiting for your children, it's like you're in the waiting room of God. God, I'm in your waiting room. What is it that I need to learn? at this time it's not a time for you to get bitter or for you to get scared or for you to start feeling that there's something wrong or for pressures to start breaking you and your husband apart is the time to go before god in the place of prayer you need to go to the word of god get up a confidence thank god they're now online look up everything that talks about marriage look at everything that talks about children about giving birth you know, God has made so many promises. He said he will not, he will not give you a womb and not be able to let you have babies in it. He will not, he will not have let you have babies and then shut the womb. So that means you will not have a miscarriage. Begin to prophesy all those things into your life. Begin to begin to pray those things. Bible says that our faith is, you know, is, is the same what they be not as though they were. Begin to prophesy this, things. begin to prepare yourself, begin to prepare your mind for this one and do it with a cheerful spirit. Yes, we are human. Sometimes you can get down. Yes, that is true. And when we do get down, please go back to the word of God and comfort yourself in it. You know, David, when he was at Ziklag and I think Ziklag and um, the, the enemies had come to take away their wives at the property when they went to war. Bible says that he and his men came back there and they saw that everything had gone and they sat down and they wept so. But after a while, David encouraged himself. You know, so there are times when you will weep, you will be sad, but after a while, please get up and encourage yourself again, you know, and tell yourself that I am going to be a mother of children. I am going to be a mother of children. And then you will begin to see. It doesn't, I don't know how long it is that God will take, but I always say that anybody that says God do it now, you need to put God what time zone. Because <laughs> they, 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 if you say God do it now, do it tomorrow. Tomorrow may not come in you know, next 12 hours for some for some time zone. And God's time zone is much, 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 much more than that. That's why it says his ways are not our ways. His, his plans are not that they are unfathomable for us. Mm -hmm. So when you say God do it now, the now may be different from your time zone. You know, so let's understand that God's time will always be best. And one thing you must realize is that if there's any delay in your life and you are in God, God will give you years to enjoy it. I have friends, I have colleagues now that at the age of 50, 51, they're just having their first children. They're just giving birth, you know, and then join that stage of motherhood in peace and in joy, you know? And before that time, they have also been enjoying life. Their lives did not stop because that did not happen. Mm. So don't let anybody put a stigma on you. Don't let them knowingly or knowingly, or maybe, you know, there are many people that try to help us quote and unquote. No, don't let anybody lay fears upon you. Enjoy your life. Serve God with all your heart. There are some things you will be able to do now that when you have children, you will not be able to do. So optimize this time fully to serve God, to serve humanity, make a mark, you know, enjoy life with your husband, be more, be closer, let that time be a time of closeness with you, you know, and just avoid negative things. And I trust that in God's time, he will make everything beautiful. Wow, awesome, you see? You see what I'm talking about? 
just one question that mommy have said a lot, a lot that we all need to know. You know, I just like to listen to her over and again. And she has said a lot of things that are very important. And I believe you have a lot of single and uh, parents in waiting here. And I believe there's some things that she has said that you really need to keep them safe. You said something that it really, it really caught my attention is don't let your life stop. They live their life. Their life didn't stop. You're talking about your, maybe your colleagues that are just having children now. So a lot of people, you know, because they were waiting, they are not able to have children on time. Their life literally stopped. So those are the things we have to watch and guide. And, and I want us to, I want you to talk about uh, some people in waiting, but when you see them, they're actually trusting God for children. But when you see them, they can't stand other people's children. They can't have kids come to their house. They do, if you ask them to help with diaper, they'll tell you they don't know how to have diaper yet, but they, yet they desire to become a parent, a mother. And they're really looking forward. They are worried. They are worried like they are really worried. God, when? What's your advice to this set of people? Yeah. Um, you see, for many people, it's very, very difficult as human beings to celebrate other people's successes, genuinely. You know, there, there's that tinge of envy when you hear, eh, Nagwaja that's uh, married uh, five years after you has given birth to a set of twins. You no, know, there's something in your heart that will force twins, you know? And then if you're a Christian, you say, Bible says rejoice to those who are rejoicing. Mm -hmm. But for a lot of people, that thing just sets them back and say, God, why? If this person had it, this one was younger than me, my this and that, that did this, you know, and you become very bitter. You see, when you become bitter like that, you are just, you are just, um, you are just postponing your own time of rejoicing, mm -hmm. you know, because Bible says rejoice to those that rejoice. Yes, it may hurt you. You may go back to your closet and smile, but anyone that has children, when you hear this person give birth, you as a person, take a gift and tell God, God, I am sowing this as a seed to my own time of rejoicing. You know, do not, I know that it may be difficult for some people, but do not, do not isolate yourself from, 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 from your friends or your family members that have children or even the younger ones that have children, you know, um, try to be friendly and to be open. Yes, a lot of times you may get insulted by people knowingly or unknowingly. But you see, um, I always say that insults don't actually stick on your face. It is what you accept to, 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 to enter into your heart that stays there. You know, so go into this with a mindset that yes, People are different and they will say all sorts of things. Some may say hurtful things to you, but that shouldn't stop you from being who you are in God. Just, you know, as long as you have, get your Bible verses on children. You know, begin to speak all of this. Find everything that you need in the word. There's nothing that we need that is not in the word of God for our life. It is our manual. It's just that sometimes we are too lazy to go there to find that. So go to the word of God and find your word or your words for that season. And remember, it is just a season in your life. Don't be, don't be angry. Don't be aggravated. Don't be irritated. Bring children close to you. You know, you're rousing over your malone for my wife, you know, be, be, be happy with children. Bring them close. Even Jesus said that anyone that brings that 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 uh, that uh, cares for this little one in my name is doing it for me. You know, the little children, let them come to you. If you're a Christian or if you're a Muslim, whatever you are, join the the, the children's church. Hmm. You understand? Mingle with these children. Let them know you. Don't worry if your your junior sisters uh, or the, the, the 10th year, whatever is calling you auntie or what. Don't worry about all those things. Don't worry about all those things, you know? Um, I, I, let me give you the analogy of when you go to the market. When you go to the market, there's so much noise in the market. The person that's selling tomato, I'm, I'm talking about a Nigerian market, so maybe not, not, not in the mall, you know? The person that's selling this will call you, this will call you, that will call you. But if what you are going to buy is meat in the market, you are going to buy your meat. Even though the evil man is calling you to come and buy dress, this one is calling you to come and take on. Everybody is making noise. 
you know, but you have a focus and you have a target of what you want to buy. Let your life be like that. Let your heart be set like that. Don't listen to the noise. I call them the noise of the market. They are distractions by the enemy to take you away from God's promise for your life. But every time we actually do those things, we are doing them in fear. And every time we step out in fear, then we don't have faith. And every time we don't have faith, we're saying, God, we do not believe that you are actually able to take care of this. You know? So let's go of the noise. Let's go of all that. Anytime your heart wants to shake, you know, just get that one word that you have. Let that be like your mantra that you chant. Be happy for them. Learn to change diapers from other people's children. Learn to, learn to take care of your children from other people's children. There's a problem that it takes a village to raise a child. Use those children to learn. You understand? Learn, how do you make a flipping bottle? Be curious, how do you do this? Let them laugh at you, let them whatever, let them move from the back, let them do whatever. You know what you are trying to do, learn mm. from them, love them, you know? Even if they say, oh, we want to go out, say, let come, I will help you do, if you have the time, come, I will, I will help you take care of the children so you can have some time out. Have time to go, when you are with those children, use them as a channel to pray to God, and God, I desire my own also, you know? And as you do that, as you love other children, as you rejoice with those that are being blessed with the blessing that you want, you know? The, the, as, as, you, as you soak yourself in the word, that envy, that jealousy, that twinges that you have when you hear good news from somebody would go back completely. And we actually genuinely begin to rejoice with people. You would want to love their children and the children will love you. And before long, God will squeeze you. You'll be celebrated also. So don't worry. Leave the noise of the market and focus on God. Awesome. Awesome. You know, I'm just looking at the time. I was like, oh my God, who is going to tie the time up for us? Because we are just barely starting. Awesome, mommy. Avoid negativity. Let go of the noise. If you did not get anything out of what mommy just said, avoid negativity and let go of the noise and use other people's children to practice. Don't, don't just close up and feel like, no, it's not my business. And I said something in one of my videos before I said, uh, the children in heaven now, they are very smart and clever. They're also watching. If God says, okay, now go to that family, they'll say, God, God, please, I don't want to go to that one. She's not ready. Can't you see the way she's behaving? So sometimes, just like what mommy said, we push a miracle forward. We're telling God we are not ready. So that should not be the case. Because of time, we just continue. We move up quickly. I want mommy to talk about, uh, to talk to young moms young moms and I want to well, maybe they are young moms and they don't really know what parenting entails before they became a mother and they are quite young and their children are still very young so I want you to use your experience when you were you're like as a young mom what were the challenges and what advice can you give them now that they are struggling now they're a parent but they don't know much but they're already parents so I want you to use your own practical experience when you were a young mom Thank you so much. Um, for young moms, I want to first say that uh, breed, you know, um, and one thing you should know that parenting or parenthood is, is a marathon, it's not a sprint, you know, and there are phases of parenting for everybody. As a young mom, you're in a stage where you hardly get enough sleep, um, the children need all your attention, probably you are working, or you are not, you know, it is an intense time in your own life as a person. So first of all, you need to, um, if you had had a mental preparation and in your mind known exactly what you want for these children, we all want the best for our children, but what is the best is the question, you know? So you begin to ask God, what is the best for this child's life? And what I have known from hindsight is the best person to help you train your child is the Holy Spirit, is the best person to help. If you, if you are stuck, Holy Spirit, please help me. Bible says that he will guide you. He will lead you in the way in which you should go. You know, he will save your children. You, he's, he's the best helper, the best one that can actually teach you and help you train your children. Take it easy with your children also. Take it easy with yourself. 
you understand your, your children are not robots yes we've read a lot of books yes we've done a lot of researching and all of that but know that every child is unique even twins have differences you know so take time to look at your children and pattern their needs after what you observe but of course have your fundamentals in place what are the fundamental things you want your child to have? Fear of the Lord, respect for elders, respect for this. You know, you, you have those things in mind that you want. And then at little stages, you begin to actually teach these children, let's pray. You know, gathering children to pray from even when they are babies. As a baby, just put them and say, amen. You know, let them be there in the place of prayer. Talk to them about Jesus. Sing to them. You know, there are many um, cartoons or many children's movies that talk about, about Christianity or your religion in their own language. Censored, because a lot of things that are a bit funny. But you know, let them, let your atmosphere be, be soaked in what you want for your life. You know, because whatever you put on your television at that stage, whatever you put on your radio, there are things that is, you are creating the atmosphere. That's why you see small children when they begin to twerk. They heard that music from somebody or from somewhere and they heard it recurrently. But if you see a child also singing a hosanna, hosanna, is a song that the child has heard. So don't forget that you are molding up these children afresh. Create the right atmosphere for your children. When my children were young, we didn't watch any movies apart from cartoon. You know, that, that was all that they could watch, you know? And so that was all I could watch also, you know? So I, and the books we were reading were all the books that were just children's books. That's all you will find in my house then because that is what was appropriate for them. So it's a time when you have to let go really of some of the things that you want to do. And know that this is the phase where you have to actually create the right atmosphere for this ones to grow up. In. And as we do that, you begin to find that um, the children, you know, it's, 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 they imbibe it. It's just like the learn language. They imbibe this thing. There is a culture, the, the language they imbibe is, they, they, they imbibe the language of faith, the language of God, or otherwise. Whatever characteristic or trait your child brings out, it is the seed that you have sown in them that is beginning to shoot out. If your child is disrupted, what was the atmosphere you created in the home then? You know, and we can see that at little stages when a child is in nursery school and you find the child being so, so bad, so destructive, so this, you will know a child that has been set healthy boundaries at home and a child that has not been set. You would know. You know, so it's very important for you to take time. It takes time. It takes time a lot to do this. It's important for you to take the time to set your healthy boundaries for your children at very early ages, your zero to three years old. Set them in the right direction. Give them the right things to do. You see, worry more about what is important, which is the atmosphere for these children. Worry less about your house being so perfectly clean and all of that. You understand? Because you are human. If you can get help, get help. Don't think you can do it all alone. Don't feel I'm a new mom. Nobody must touch my child. Nobody must help me. Nobody must do that. We always, you know, as young moms, we are always so protective of our children. But you know, it's not supposed to be like that. Ask for help. Receive help. Take care of yourself because you cannot give what you do not have. If you are not healthy, if your mindset is confused, if you are not in, in a healthy position mentally, you can't give that to your children, the things that you want. So take care of yourself. Don't, don't overexhaust yourself because you want to do everything and be everything. You know, because when you get to the end of the finish line, that is what I'm talking, I'm talking about the milestones for the children. Don't get there and you're exhausted and you don't have the, the energy to celebrate and enjoy those moments. You know, so that's, that's my advice for you. Create the right atmosphere, take care of yourself.
I sincerely thank you so much, mommy. God bless you. I really appreciate the point that you're dropping. And I really, I sincerely feel we have more time or another Saturday for this because this is really deep. And I really appreciate the point that you're dropping. In case you did not listen very well, pick the point. He said, the best person that can help you raise your children is the Holy Spirit, especially if you're a believer. The best person that can help you is the Holy Spirit. Set, set healthy boundaries. <laughs> healthy boundaries. And I think this is one of the things that a lot of parents are lacking today. They just feel their children, a child of four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. If you see the way they behave, not only at home, everywhere, let's set healthy boundaries. You said something in the last uh, meeting during the Zoom. You said, teach them now so that you don't use the rest of your life to be praying and trying to fix the problem. So let's do the work now. We have to do it now. We have to do it now. Uh, you said something also. You said, uh, don't worry about dirty house. You know, sometimes if you need to get help, get help. When my children were much younger, I had help. When uh, at the point, I, now I don't have any help anymore. And it was, I, I was the type that, you know, I pay attention to details. I don't mm -hmm. want any debt. And for my children, the only, I can say, challenge I have with them is I will always see books and papers around. You would think, I see, you would think we are selling books or we are, if they are not drawing, they are doing this. So I, I just, I'll keep, I said, let's arrange. Read, finish one before you pick another. But they will just keep those books. I think they want to eat it up. So what I started doing to help me, to help me, doctor, you can mute. What I started doing to help me is, uh, I started switching on the lights. You know, I look for what is going to be therapeutic for me. So I'm mentioning this, baby is going to help somebody. I started switching off the light so that I can see less. And it's, it's still helping me today. If you come to my house today, you're like, well, why are they not always putting on the bright light? That is like a therapy session for me. I want to see less. So I try to, switch off the light. Because of time, uh, I want you to talk about what you think is challenge, uh, challenges in, par uh, in parenting with your experience, because I've seen your children, I've, seen, I've known you for the past 12 years. It's not because you're seated here, your parenting style, your positive parenting is worthy of emulation. However, you never can tell. What are the things that you think there are challenges in parenting, uh, maybe with children, whatever you, generally with your experience, what do you think are challenges in parenting? Yeah, thank you so much. Um, you see, um, there's no one straight way to parenting a child. And for every child that you have, trust me, your parenting method will be different. Mm. And, if, and as they grow from one stage to the other, your parenting method also must change because your role in their lives begin to change. As a young mother, you are the trainer, you are the guardian, you are the, you are the West mommy, West mommy, West mommy, you are the go-to person. You know, if you have been able to imbibe that trust in them, as they grow older, when they have teenage challenges, young adult challenges, they will be able to come to you for counsel. But still, you know, there's no way that um, you parent a child that, you cannot say you, you, you've done this because you've done a perfect job that your child came out right. No, it is not. It is just God. You need to put prayers into this. A lot of prayers for your children. Because trust me, it is not the work that you do. It is not the words that you say. It is just everything that you've said mixed by God making everything to work out for you. Some of the challenges that I found in children, when they get to certain stage, children can, they, they test your limits, or they test the boundaries. You've set these boundaries for them. You know, children would always test the boundaries to say, okay, if I take this one step like this, what would they say? If I take that one step like this, what would they say? And as children get older, they test more. They can test you to the point where your nerves get to that point of, hmm, you understand? But the thing is that you need to realize that these children are also trying to test. You know, a lot of parents I've seen in that time, uh, they, they, they run away from conflict. You know, 
um, I'm talking now as children grow older, you know, when they are young and you say do this, they can say yes. But when they're when about young adults, you understand when your child comes from like maybe like, um, well, I don't know this culture now, maybe like from age 16, but let's say from like age 18, like that, you understand? When they want to start testing boundaries, you know, don't be afraid of conflict. Don't be afraid. You are your child's friend. You are not their party. You understand? So I'm your friend. I'm not your party. I'm not. Uh, I'm. I'm not. You. You understand? Yes. You are my. I'm. I'm a, I want to be a friend to you, but I am also a mother to you. And there are limits that you will not cross without consequences. So there will be times when there will be conflicts between you and your children. Serious conflicts when you need to put your foot down and say, this is it, and that is it. You know, the child can sulk, the child can have bad attitude, but a lot of times, like I said, a lot of these things also, you see, by the time you start running after all this bad attitude, this attitude, that attitude, <laughs> trust me, you're just, you're chasing tails. You understand? But you set in place exactly, this is what is going to happen, and this is what is going to be. Ignore all their bad attitudes and whatever. You know, there are times when you just must just ignore a lot of these things from the children. They'll come back again. They'll come to themselves again, you know? But let's, you need to let the children know that even though you are there for them, you are their mother or you are their father, and you stand as an authority in their lives, mm. you know? And you know you stand as an authority in their lives until the time they also become parents and they become they're out of your house and you trust that they will take decisions like that. Some decisions or some things may not be easy, but yes, I stand as an authority in your life, whether you like it or not. And this is how this is going to be, because this is what I know would happen if you don't do this. You may not like it, but that is how it is going to be. When I was training my children back then, I have two generations of children. So, <laughs> you know, so there was a training method I used. I, I will train you. I will discipline you. I will, you, I will, you will, I will start punishment. You understand? But as I started with the second generation, I knew that there are better ways also to do the things. You understand? But I always let my children know that. See, that mom is still that more and if this method of learning by instruction is not going fast enough for you trust me i know how to bring out the cane and the punishment that i'm not nigerian mother you know whatever it takes to make sure that you get it right i will do it you can thank me later or not you know but whatever it needs to take for your life to be what it should be because from hindsight, your decisions would affect your life tomorrow. You may not, may there may be small decisions, awesome. simple decisions, mm. you know. And we have to stop you now. Thank you so much, mommy. What, 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 what? Great point, great point. Oh, I'm blessed. And <laughs> oh my God, I'm really blessed. And you have said a lot. Uh, you said testing limits. And you said something last now. You said you might, you may have to thank me later or not. So we are going to be having another guest joining us now. And we are going to hear from her. Shortly, you're going to be seeing her face. Everybody just relax. The part of the thanking later. Mommy said something. She said uh, she has uh, two generations of children. A lot of people be wondering, what does she mean? Maybe she adopted some. No. Mommy is blessed with four wonderful children. The first two are grown. And I think mommy had a lot of rest and had the second generation. So things are changing, life are revolving, technology is advancing. So what worked are those for the first two, we not work for the second two. That was what she was saying. And uh, we are going to be having Dr. Tinu Olajide joining us now. Dr. Tinu Olajide is mommy Tolu first daughter and she's a medical doctor. And today I'm very glad for her saying yes to join us on this special edition of Parenting Essential. Doctor, please kindly put your camera on. We want to see your face. Because you want it to be practical, we don't just want me to teach us. We want to hear from the seed that mommy raised by the grace of God. Doctor, are you there? Hello, Dr. Yes, Tino, yes. how are you? <laughs> Very well, thank you. Uh, 
Very glad to see your face. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Thank you for saying yes and thank you for coming to Parenting Essential from the Vision Guide. Everyone, that is Dr. Tino, not just a doctor by, uh, they didn't just dash at the title. That's my personal doctor, everybody. <laughs> she is a medical doctor, a medic, oh, oh my God, a medical doctor. And she is the first child of our guest. She's also a guest today, by the way. So she's the first child of Mommy Tolu Olajide, and that is Dr. Tino. Dr. Tino, you are welcome today. I just want you to say hello Thank to everybody so one more time, then I will ask you. One or two questions and I'll let you go. Okay, thank you. So thank you for having me as a guest on your show. And um, it's a privilege, I'm grateful. <laughs> I hope glad I live up to expectations. <laughs> I'm glad you're here, I'm glad you're here. Okay, Dr. Mommy, I've said a lot raising you and uh, at least I saw a few things. I met you over a decade, I believe, and I've seen you grown, you know, you know, for me, when I meet you and I say my personal doctor, I don't want to go there today. It's a big joy and a pride for me. I feel like, okay, I'm still the big auntie. I, you know, I, I, you know that, that sense of entitlement. That's my little sister yeah. and she's a medical doctor. So I want you to just share your experience, maybe one or two growing up with mommy, maybe through correction or something that happened that you felt at that particular time, this is not right. You felt so bad. But at the end of the day, you could realize that, oh, at the end of the day, this I can get what mommy is saying. It's it worked at the end of the day that you can really look back to that. Oh, thank God I listened to her. Just go ahead and share your experience with us. Are you there? Yes, yes, I am. So oh. sorry, it, the connection went off a bit, but I did hear but, the question. Did you? Okay, just go ahead. Over to you. Okay, so thank you so much for the opportunity again. My pleasure. Um, I would say that the example I can think of basically led to my profession today, like led to me being a medical doctor. So I'd always wanted to be a medical doctor. It's been, I was that child that you asked, what do you want to be when you grow up? And I would say doctor. <laughs> and um, I stuck with it for a very, very long time. I was very serious about it. I didn't have any other dream in mind, quote and unquote. Although I was in Nigeria, um, I was a well-rounded student, like, because in Nigeria, I did take sciences, um, um, business, and law. All the subjects for all of them, basically, in high school. I took all the subjects. So I did the, the economics, and I also did, the um, I think, the CRK for law, something. Just everything. I did everything. And when we moved to Qatar, um, when we were about to go find a school, the school insisted, because I was going to be, I was supposed to be in grade 10 when I came to Qatar, the school insisted dropping me down a grade. And that really made me very angry. I was like, me? <laughs> what do you mean drop me down a grade? And they explained the situation. Basically, I had to do an exam there first because of the whole all levels exam before I had to go to the 10th grade and all of that. That was if I wanted to go into sciences, I wanted to go into medicine. And I was just like, you know what? I'll just go the business route. So I don't have to drop a grade. And that was it for me. I didn't want to ever drop a grade. I would rather go the, the other route instead of having to drop the grade. So that was my decision. I told my mom, she was okay. We drove home, everything was cool. And then in the evening, she just calls me and um, she says she totally understands how I feel. She gets the whole um, annoyance I feel as to having to drop a grade. And she just, um, she told me, I can't, I cannot say it the exact way, but this was how I heard it in my mind. Um, this decision you're about to make now, how would you feel about it in the next five years? Would it make you happy or would it make you sad? You know, my mom always says something. She says, instead of whatever life throws at you, you know, instead of having the mindset of, oh, had I known, you should rather have the mindset of, oh, oh, well, <laughs> you know, at least, oh, well, that happened, you know. So basically what she means by that is instead of not taking that path, that path that you believe might be good for you, take it and quote and unquote fail and have yourself say, you know what, oh, well, at least I did do something. And I listened to that advice and I dropped down a grade, started from grade nine. And I'm so grateful to that because I can't see myself doing anything in business. <laughs> it just doesn't suit my personality. You know? And she saw that. She knew this girl needed to be a doctor. I like being busy. I like having no time. 
I like doing things and that has really helped me in my career. So I would say that when she told me to do that, then I was very angry. I was sad. I was almost feeling shame because I was like, how could I drop down a grade, you know? But at the end of the day, the decision and the way she spoke to me about it, I'm so glad she didn't force me because I think if she forced me, it would have caused a lot of friction. She talked to me about it. She made me see the reason towards it. And now I understand why I chose it. I understand and I'm grateful for the decision. I mean, I'm a medical doctor today, <laughs> thanks to that. And so, yeah, that's one example I think of in that year. Awesome. And I believe a lot of us are learning. Personally, see, people, you can see how I'm very gentle today because my children also are still very little. So it's a learning curve for everyone. I'm learning today. I'm not just here as the host, but I'm here to learn. And there's something that you said, and I also picked that from mommy's point. She didn't force you. So there, there, was, there was this relationship, like mother-daughter relationship, being a friend and authority. However, she didn't impose that you have to drop the grade. And I think this is one yeah. thing that every one of us should learn today, that when we are trying to guide our children into the better future that we feel by the help of the Holy Spirit or whatever you believe in, that is best for them, we should not impose. It's not because of what we want, but let them see reasons. You know, at the end of the day, doctor is happy that today she's a doctor and she's still grateful that mommy didn't force her. Mommy says something about uh, breaking limits. You know, that children will grow and at a point they want to break limits and boundaries. Can you by any chance, doctor, remember any limit or boundaries that you tried to break? Can you by any chance or something like, or nothing of such happened? Did you, can you remember any? Okay. Okay, you mean test, testing limits with my mom? Yes, testing limits and boundaries. Oh, yes. definitely. Yeah, <laughs> yeah um, I do like it. Yes. Um, I mean, there have been many times, you know, one thing I noticed through my mom and our relationship, you know, I remember when I was very little and, you know, in school, then they were asked you to write composition on your mother. I didn't even know my mom's name. I would say the name of my mom is mommy. <laughs> you know, that was the relationship we had then. She was, up, she was just mommy, 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 mommy. That was it. I didn't know her age since I was, little, since I was like six. I've always said my mommy's age is 40. <laughs> And I'm sure when I was six, she was less than 40. You know, so I didn't know her. I didn't, I didn't know her as a person. I never believed my mommy could have been a baby or she was six years old like me then. She was just her. So that was my relationship with her at that point. But then as we grew, as I grew rather, I began to see her more as a human being. I knew she had a name. I knew her age. I knew her characters. I could be able to say a bunch of things. So, you know, I could read. And she, my mom, in a way, I think my mom allowed me be a friend to with her you know she opened that door for me and of course <laughs> children will kajay <laughs> and i think i did so that let's hear one of the kajay that you did <laughs> okay um i really don't you see my mom always says i think i remember all the negative experience right now i can't remember anything what you see okay <laughs> but but i i can't i can't remember a specific at time like okay. a specific event, but I can say for sure that there have been times when I have crossed my mom and she would literally have to put me in my place. Tinu, stop. You know, she would, she would be very, very straight with me. And at that point, I wouldn't know. Truly, at that point, I wouldn't know. I just think I'm playing. I just think I'm, I might just say something or do something. Or maybe, maybe I'll just, you know, when you play with your friends, you just keep hitting them on their <laughs> on their hands or something like that. It could just be something like that. And then at that point, I'm kind of like crossing a limit. And then I'm like, oh, she's my mom. Oh, she's not a good friend that I'm going to hang out, hang out with or something, you know? Mm -hmm. So even though I can't remember a specific time, I can tell you for sure that I have crossed my limits. My mom, I think even now with my age, <laughs> there are times that because I kind of know my mom as a friend, as a woman, as this, you know, there are times that I could say something out of place and she would place me at position again. Because yeah, my mom, and I love my mom. I always, I always said I love my mom. And I always tell myself, I said, you know, you calm down, <laughs> go back to your position as a child and let her be her mom. Like let her be the mom that she is. So I think with age, it has happened a lot, but yeah, that's it. Awesome, awesome, awesome. I'm just enjoying myself right here. And I want to believe everyone there on Facebook are having a great time, just like I am doing the same. Awesome. You know, 
mommy did a great job. I'm, I'm going to commend you especially today. And I wish I have an award to give you today because I've been talking so much about being your child friend and also being an authority. And this is, you know, this is, I like the, this, this topic for today, the evidence-based parenting. So it's really glad in my heart when doctor said, okay, I'll come. Because when we are talking, let's show proof. So this is a, a, a living proof that you can be your child's friend and yet still be an authority. I want to say thank you so much, Dr. Tino, for coming. I don't know if right. there's anything you want to say. I don't have any other question for you. But if you have no, something to say, I love you, before, Mama. <laughs> mommy. Oh, you, baby. Love, love you, too. Blessed, mommy. <laughs> you are blessed. <laughs> Yeah, bless. Don't forget my appointment, doctor. You gave me an appointment, right? Yeah, definitely. Full physical, yeah. I definitely. am coming. I'm definitely coming. Can you see how much I'm blessed, everyone? Don't be jealous of me. That's my partner, <laughs> doctor. So she's going to be checking me up. See, it's going to be a big auntie. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All together, everybody, let's know how we are going to balance this being uh, ch to be our child's friend and still be an authority. Thank you so much, Dr. Tino, for coming. Thank you we so are much, so Mark. happy and I'm sure a lot of people, there are comments here on Facebook and uh, you're not on Facebook, you'll be able to see it. People who are being blessed, they are taking notes and they are very happy that you are here today. And I'm not just taking it as just for granted. I see that a great privilege to have you with me today. Thank, Thank you, you so and God bless you. Thank you. So mommy, I will just, what's the time now? Um, oh, hmm, time is fast spent. Thank you for coming. Uh, okay, I'll just ask uh, mommy one or two questions more. I know the time is gone, but I'm sure people, they don't mind at this point because you're really getting blessed and learning a lot. I've asked you about the challenges in parenting. Or... Anyways, you mentioned it already because you said you have two sets of generation of children and you, have to, you, you spoke about what I call tailored approach, that in parenting, it doesn't work. But if you are to have, I know you're done. I don't need to ask. You're just waiting for grandchildren now. If you are to have children at this generation, at this age and time, what would you have done differently? I believe I would adopt the same method I'm, I've adopted with the younger ones now. Okay. Um, which is more of, um, it's more of instruction-based and more patience in terms of parenting um, because you know it's not uh, it will be less of the the nigerian method of you know uh, instance you need to do and i can plug you into right now into doing this thing and all of that you get what i mean so it may take a bit of more time but what i've seen is that at the end of the day it's actually it gives a more robust child in, in terms of in terms of their thinking, in terms of their maturity, in terms of their confidence level, and in terms of their thinking, you know. So yeah, it's it's a more it's a longer approach, but um, instructional based. Let me just say that an instructional based parenting uh, and the help of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> That's, awesome. that's that's just that's just it, you know. Um, yes, that that is the approach I would take now. No, wow. Mommy, I just wrap, you know, you wrapped up like three or four videos I've made in the past and you put it in one word. And I'm going to keep that word with me, instructional-based parenting. Because I know I've spoken about uh, clear direction. I believe an instructional-based parenting is going to be full of clear direction, giving choices. Last week, I was talking about uh, how to help our children to be emotional, emotionally matured adults. So we, I was talking about giving them choices. Don't just say you have to do this. Even up to the color of clothes, blue or white shirt, like a pant or skirt. I believe everything you're saying is wrapped up with all these breakdown points. So sometimes, you know, you don't just push to them. Let them think. It helps their critical thinking, the cognitive development. So and I believe everyone is learning. I've learned a lot. I've learned a lot. I don't want to keep us waiting. The time is... Uh, Fast spent. My last question is what worked for you best? And you have said it in from your point. So we don't need to go to that part again. If you have any question before we finish today, just go ahead in one minute. I'm just going to give one minute. If I don't see any question in one minute, I believe you don't have question. If you have any question, please go ahead and drop the question within the next 60 seconds. And why I will just be saying thank you so much, Momitolu or Lajide, for saying yes to me today. 
I've been personally blessed and I believe people are blessed along with me. So I believe you are blessed. <laughs> and if thank not, so I believe much. you are. Yes. Uh, I've been blessed. Uh, thank you for coming. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you so much for coming. And I believe there are more to learn, more things to learn from you. If I say again, you know how much I can be disturbing you, mommy. And I crawl to your, so your phone or your door again. Mommy, please, I want you to come. I believe you won't say no to me. Because I know, not because you're seated here, that you love me so much. <laughs> and I, <laughs> I know that. I know I love you too. This, oh yeah, this is your little baby. I love you too. So I just want to say thank you so much for coming, mommy. I really appreciate your time. I know you can be so busy, but yet you're giving me this time, your precious time. I want to say thank you so much for coming. Thank you for saying yes. Thank you for teaching us. Thank you for blessing us. Thank you for continually guiding me and blessing me. I've learned a lot from you and I'm still learning from you. I want to say thank you. There is no question so far. I want to believe there is no question today. And if I swear, just inbox your question later. You can send it by email. If your question is personal, because sometimes the questions are really personal. They don't want to type it or do that. People will not think, what am I asking? Go ahead and send your question. I'll be getting in touch with mommy. She's going to answer the question. Then I will post it on the Facebook and Instagram or YouTube. And we can get the answers later. You don't have to be in a hurry to ask a question today. Once again, thank you everyone for joining today. What a massive turnout. Thank you so much. Ademola Ojo, Mariam Liz, uh, Lolade Impact, Mrs. Shoma Day, Rashida Adenike, Sister Tony, I cite you there. I can see my friend there all the way from UK. Thank you for joining me. You know, I love you. And many more. Diki, no more, you're there. Thank you for joining. Ayola Sunday, thank you for joining. Abimbola, Lovet, Lolo Tess, thank you for joining. Miss Remy, I cite you there. Thank you for joining. Miss Peggy, Mrs. Peggy, thank you for joining. Mrs. Pascal, thank you for joining. Kemi Taiwo, Akim Bami, thank you for joining. So many people, I can't see everyone right now, but, but thanks so many people right there today. So thank you everyone, I appreciate everyone from the depth of my heart, I appreciate you. And if you're seeing my face for the very first time, my name is Oye Layo, Oye for short your parenting coach. And if you're joining halfway through, our guest today is called Mommy Tolu Olaji Day. Mommy Tolu Olaji Day. I said it at the beginning that she was my first ever manager in Doha and she imparted me positively and she's still impart, uh, she imparting me till today. And we're privileged also to have a doc, uh, first child, a medical doctor who has spoken to us. If you're, if you're not, if you we're not here, if you're just joining, you can take time and watch this video again. It's loaded, it's impactful, it's gonna watch your time. You're gonna gain a lot. I want to say once again, thank you so much for coming, mommy. God bless you. Thank you for having me. Thank, thank you so much. I thank love you. you. Thank, thank you so much. You. Thank, thank you. All right, everybody. Thank you so much. We have come to the end of today's session, Parenting Essential, titled Evidence-Based Parenting. Don't forget, parenting must be intentional. It, it must be purposeful. It must be full of vision. And that is one of the points that mommy emphasized today. Vision, the vision you don't have, you cannot achieve. When you have the vision, even if it looks blurry, even if it looks as if you don't know what you're doing, the vision will keep you going and keep you moving. Once again, thank you, everybody. Be blessed. And I'll see you again the same time, six o'clock next week, in another wonderful topic. Bye for now, everybody. God bless. <laughs>